I'm Jean Pickett and we are around town with the best businesses at the beach. Today we have Gregory DeFranza from Camp Canine. Hey Greg. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Hey, what you do is so interesting and there's so many facets to it. It's not um, dog training. It's Basically, you're a behavioral specialist. So tell me how that works. What I do is actually teach people. Uh, so the dogs do understand behavior. What mm -hmm. we don't understand is how to make that happen when, mm -hmm. we, when we need it. And then oftentimes we just, we misread what we're seeing. You know, a dog has okay. a lot of energy and we forget that that's a mental energy. And so we have to okay. help our dogs be able to, to be calmer and more respectful. And we only do that by helping them with their energy. But something that you mentioned is that we put our human emotions and expectations and everything onto a dog, but that's not really how they communicate and learn. No, dogs have emotions. They're happy, mm -hmm. they're sad, they're depressed, angry, mm -hmm. but that doesn't drive their day. Mm -hmm. right? With us, we're the only species in the animal kingdom that is emotionally based. Okay. Dogs and every other animal, but especially canines, uh, are instinct based. So what are we doing right now? Not what did we do in the past necessarily, what did we do or what are we going to do in the future? And that doesn't have anything to do with learning and staying consistent with how you relate to the dog. Mm -hmm. It just has to do with this is what I want now. And the dogs, all of them are by DNA designed to follow. So we have to lead. Okay, but within say a pack, there, you were saying there was leaders, there's, there's the workers, there's the, the, the introvert dog. Right. So within a pack, there's a certain structure. So you have to understand where your dog fits into that natural structure, correct? Correct. <clears throat> so the front of the pack is the one that provides what we do. Mm -hmm. Protection, direction, leadership. Uh, the middle of the pack is what everybody's vision of a dog is. Happy-go-lucky, everything is awesome. Yeah, uh, love all the time. You know, all the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Into everything, really need jobs to mm -hmm. help that brain stay engaged. And then there's the back of the pack, boys and girls, and those are the ones that are a little bit uh, more careful about processing their world. Things are a little bit more startling to them because mm -hmm. in the wild, their job is to kind of keep an ear out for that twig or that leaf. They're that the high alert them. ones. They're the ones that protect everybody's back. Okay. And when they alert the rest of the group, the middle of the pack is the ones that go, great, we have a job. Where's that twig? And right. leadership says, address that or ignore that. But those are all personality traits that has nothing to do with the owner in particular. Doesn't have anything to do with the owner. Doesn't have anything to do with a, with a dog dog's quote-unquote history right because oftentimes we'll look at a dog that can be more back of the pack mm -hmm. and a little bit more careful of everything and then we assume that they're scared or they're uh they've been abused or things okay. like that which is absolutely not necessarily the case okay so the first thing in in knowing and understanding your your dog is to know what what part of the pack they're from or or and that way that instructs you as a human on how to communicate better with that's them. That's correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So pack position mm -hmm. and then energy level okay. is the other important concept with this low, medium or high energy. <clears throat> and it really all of that needs to fit with your lifestyle and your mm -hmm. family's lifestyle. Uh, otherwise, it becomes more frustrating. For the human. So you as the behavioral specialist, somebody calls you and obviously they're dealing with problems with, within their family and their, their dog. So what is the most common problem that you're seeing? Most common problem I hear is my dog pulls on the leash. Really? Right? Yes. Yeah. So there's, and what causes the pulling is excitement, but the we go. as humans yeah. pull back. But oh. unfortunately with a dog, they have what's called an opposition reflex. So mm -hmm. if I pull, the dog is going to pull the opposite way. Okay. <clears throat> and so we're not really addressing the excitement that causes that. Yeah. And when we let our dogs out in front and they're not directable, then they don't get the idea that we're supposed to just be following each other. So it's mm -hmm. like all of us, if all of us in the studio went to go for a walk, we would all walk together. Right. right. We wouldn't have people strung out all over the place because then they're not with us. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's the same concept. We, we walk with our families and our dogs are part of the family, but they need to walk with us as well. Okay. So it's just letting them understand, hey, you're, you're part of our pack now and this is where you fit into it. And just communicating properly and, and basically training them and training yourselves how to work with them. 
Correct. Okay. And so that excitement sometimes with the walk kind of transfers to my dog jumps on visitors. Right. And that's the I other see that common a lot. thing I hear. Right. I'm sure right. you do also yeah. from what you yes. do. And again, that's excitement mm -hmm. that's that's not being uh, being addressed in a way that the dog can understand. Walking is a very big component of that because okay. it's just structure and controlling the mental aspect of exercise, okay. not just the physical. So they're part. just overly excited. Yeah, and it's sure. just a matter yeah. of retraining that excitement to where they're not jumping all over you or whatever. And then the humans get frustrated and then yeah. the dog stop listening and then oh, the cycle yeah. starts. Yes, yes. understood. <laughs> awesome. So um, do you have like a website that people can go to if they wanted to, you know, even... I know we spoke about how if somebody's looking at purchasing a dog or mm -hmm. getting a dog, what best would be a best fit for your lifestyle, your personality, and everything going on? Is there a way they can contact you through a website? Absolutely. My website is www.camp. K-9 Jackspeech, J-A-X-B-C-H dot com. Uh, my Facebook pages are also uh, public. Uh, I post all of that on a continuing basis. And if anybody needs any advice, especially about compatibility, yes. uh, please I think call that's me, huge. text me, email me. Yes, by yeah. all means. Because yeah. there's more to it than just being pretty. A pretty when you dog start or... off correctly, it's, it's going to end better. Right. You start off very frustrated. Yes. And, you know, of course, if you got a puppy, puppies can be very frustrating. They're mm -hmm. manipulative little creatures. <laughs> and But they're so cute. <laughs> but they are. And <laughs> yeah. The problem yeah. is, though, we don't give them those, those rules and boundaries and limitations. Yes. We just give affection, affection, affection. Right. <clears throat> right. And affection is also giving you rules so that everybody can be happier. True. True. Thank you, Greg, so You're much. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I will see you next time on Around Town.